Actress, Renaissance man. Let me see if I can go through all of this all, Mark. Actor, writer, producer, director. Have you ever edited one of your films? I have done some okay. editing. And, yeah. have you, and uh, composing music for the films? A little bit, a little, little bit, bit of that. yeah. And, oh, you talk about your songwriting in this new book. Mm -hmm. And then Written we've got author. Author, yeah. Author. Uh, what am I? What am kale I smoothie enthusiast. <laughs> Please, thank you. Just enthusiast, or do you make kale smoothies as I well? I make them, but they're not good. Mostly okay. a fan. I'm mostly a fan. Yeah. And so that's Mark Duplass, part of the Duplass brothers duo behind such things as uh, the HBO, HBO's Togetherness, uh, many independent films going all the way back to the one you and I were talking about earlier, The yeah. Puffy Chair, but that wasn't, even that wasn't your first, was it? That was our first feature film that we showed anybody. That, that, that you <laughs> we like to everybody to believe that was our first one. That was our first one that was it. watchable. Okay, yeah. okay. But the more recently, you know, a, a lot of films that made noise in the independent film world, uh, Cyrus, Jeff Who Lives at Home, fairly recently. Uh, the inimitable Baghead, mm -hmm. um, subject of a, a bidding war at Sundance that you talk <laughs> about in, the, in this new book. So with your brother, uh, Jay Duplass, you wrote this book called Like Brothers, which is about your creative partnership, but he's not here right no. now. So what's up with that? Well, he's dead, um, but, <laughs> it's okay. but, it's o but it's okay. <laughs> no, Jay is, still Jay is still alive, everybody. Um, I think the fact that Jay is not here is a good jumping off point for what right. this book is about because right. I think that um, we grew up in the suburbs of New Orleans with no connections to any industry, no even real understanding that movies were made by people, you know, and um, once we decided we wanted to make movies, I think what happened is we linked arms and we started climbing that mountain together and we developed um, quite an insane and beautiful codependence. Um, and it worked for us for many years. And honestly, the level of soulmates that we were through our teens and our 20s yeah. is, it was some of the happiest and most incredible times of, of my life. Um, but then we had to get married and have children. Right. And, and sort not of- Not to each other, just Not to, to each clear. other, no. Right. Um, yeah. and, and create some space inside of that codependence. Um, yeah which was the trickiest part of our relationship and something that we're still dealing with today. So uh, the essence of this book is really about learning how to be soulmates with space um, and, right. and occasionally come do a salon interview without your older brother <laughs> and not have a panic attack while you're there. Is that working right now? Is that um, okay? I got a lot of clonopin pumping through my system right now, but, <laughs> I'm, but I'm doing good. all right. Yeah. Good, that's good, that's good. Yeah. Well, you know, I think, I think that it, it, those of you out there who know Mark and Jay's work, the Duplass brothers' work, whether it's in, in film or TV, th the book is probably going to speak to you. And I, I say this, I say this with love, Mark, but it, but it works very similar to some of your other craft in the sense that you are simultaneously, you guys are simultaneously taking your creative work very seriously and making fun of mm -hmm. yourselves at the same time. Right? Yeah. That's part of the one of the instruments that's in this fair. book. Yep. And and you are risking. Um, becoming ridiculous in the eyes of the audience, yeah, right? Not you want really to... risking. I think we are, <laughs> and I think we're saying that that's okay too. Okay. I mean, that's. I appreciate you being gentle about it. We haven't spoken in a while, but let's call it what it is. No, it's it's ridiculous the way that we, the way that we love each other, the way that we go head to head at times, the way that we want to be each other's everything and and can't. Um, mm -hmm. And it's it's. I think some people look at it and they're like, that's really so sweet the way these brothers are. And some people say, do North American dudes really speak to each other with that much therapy speak? And the answer for us is yes, for whatever reason. <laughs> I don't know I don't know why, yeah. but I think that, you know, when we started writing this book, we asked ourselves that question that we ask ourselves before we embark on anything right now, which is all of you have 500 movies and TV shows in your Netflix queue and 100 books you want to read. So why the hell should we make this thing? You know, what's going to be useful about it? And, and I think the one thing that we came up with, uh, at least for us, was that nobody that we know of has as much experience with long-term collaboration. Like Jay and I have been doing this for 40 years. Yeah. I mean, we have yeah. just been side by side forever and we have been through everything you can imagine. Um, and at the end of the day, I think that for us, you know, offering something that is at once the real beauty of, of having each other in those tough moments and then the real stifling nature of 
not finding time to individuate um, mm -hmm. and how that has been really rough on us in a lot of ways. Um, felt like something unique that we could serve up. And yeah, I think, that's, I think that's all right on. And one of the things about this book that struck me as I was reading it was that I, was, I, I knew it would be funny. You guys are usually pretty funny. Um, some, most of the time intentionally. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time. Yeah. 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 If you've seen some of our early movies, the dramas, they're, all, they're actually our funniest films. We're just not prepared to have people laugh at them just yet. That's the problem. No, you guys, are, you guys are very funny. I wasn't really expecting to have the experience of reading it and being like, oh, that's really pretty good advice. But some of the stuff that you talk about when you talk about the difficulties of collaborating with somebody, especially somebody you know really well, and how you get past that, I thought it was very useful, you know, probably in a lot of different contexts. It doesn't have to be making a movie. Um, starting people who start a business together or what, you know, whatever. Like the way that you guys resolve difficulties, resolve disagreements. So I loved yeah, that stuff. So I mean, talk about that a little bit. It's interesting because we didn't really plan on that being as much a part of the book. I think when we started approaching this book, we thought this is going to be really good for young aspiring filmmakers so we can show mm -hmm. them how we came from nothing. And then we thought, and, and maybe it'll expand just beyond filmmakers to anyone in a sort of startup mentality. But because we are who we are and we can't help talking about our feelings, um, <laughs> it, they're developed this almost sort yeah. of, I don't want to say self-help book, but a little bit of a how-to guide of intense collaboration, how to validate the feelings of the person you're working with, how to stand up for yourself enough, but also give enough so that uh, you can move the ship forward. And, and, and it was actually really interesting the more we talked about it and we realized something is that I think one of, the, one of the keys to our successful collaboration is that when I'm in an argument with Jay, um, it doesn't look like any other argument I've ever been in. Um, it is usually us trying to navigate a situation. And I can tell that Jay has 50% of his focus on what his own interests are. But he equally has 50% on my own interests. And he wants me to win, too. And, right. and it's been really interesting and, and crazy enough I, you know we've had people kind of talk to us how it's a lot like a marriage in a lot of ways right. people who don't have this tight sibling relationship they've looked at this book and said like oh i think that like this is how you make all those relationships work to a certain degree and you 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 do talk about this in the book but how did your relationship with Jay affect when the two of you started to have, you know, romantic relationships, yeah. girl, serious it was awful. girlfriends. It was awful. Is that true? It, it, yeah. it was awful, yeah. honestly. Like, I mean, I, f I feel horrible for the girls we dated in in high school and college. <laughs> Do you need who, to make some phone calls to, to yeah, sort of we're, we're working Yeah, we're working yeah. on okay. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to send them a signed copy of the book. Yeah, God, <laughs> Jesus. Because um, <laughs> I think what happened is, I, we didn't know it. We were emotionally immature. And... You know, the things that Jay and I would share were, were downright just betrayals of the trust that we had with, with other people that we were in intimate relationships with. And we didn't understand that that was not healthy. We didn't understand that right. um, being each other's everything, almost like twins, um, was not going to be sustainable through romantic relationships, through becoming husbands, fathers, all those things. And ultimately, those early relationships of ours were, were unsuccessful. And, and even our friendships, you know, they only got so far because the sense that everybody had around us was, well, you're only going to get so far with Mark or Jay because they have each other. Interesting, yeah. 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 And that kind of sucks in some regards <laughs> for not only those we're trying to develop right. other intimate relationships, but... But for us, oh, um, I was going to ask: did, Were you did did you notice at the time, or did you start to notice that it was emotionally limiting for it you? It was more in our twenties once we yeah. started to grow up a little bit, and then really meeting the women that we were eventually going to marry, and realizing, oh shit, this is not going to work. Like right. the way this is, we're going to have to create space. Then it begs the question, which Jay and I talk about all the time, is like. How do we become ex soulmates yet still be intimate? I mean, we we're wow. talking about this on the plane on the way over here. You wow, know? yeah. Which is like we were once each other's everything. I mean, we would write songs during the day. We'd make a little movie at night. We'd go out at two in the morning and run three miles together. We'd cook breakfast in the morning. And you know, and our parents were just kind of like, "Who are these two? <laughs> uh, where did this come from?" You know. Um, and to learn how to make space in that yet still be intimate is a lot like 
you know, not that it sounds reductive, but like it's like trying to be an alcoholic who only wants to have two drinks. And you're like to right, relearn right, that right. is very difficult in our in our partnership. And and it's something that's required a lot of care and there have been a lot of tears. Um, and I think that I don't know, I think that you know, you and I have talked a lot over the years in interviews and we do fifteen minutes or twenty minutes. Right, and, right. and and the truth is we always end up over glorifying our, our bond and we always end up uh, giving the sense that it's easier, I think, than it is, and that was part sure. of what this book was: is the the long overdue answer to the question, "How do you guys work together without killing each other?" Right. And and an hour interview has, has not been enough, and I think 320 pages is still not enough, but we're <laughs> we're scratching it. You know? <laughs> we are talking to Mark Duplass, one of the authors of this book, Life Brothers, which he wrote. That's my. Uh, no, we both have our have our mics on the our floor. Our mics are on the floor. It's, it's kind of awesome. Um, and uh, Mark and Jay are the the filmmaking and TV creating brothers and co-authors of this book. Uh, one of the things that's interesting to me about your career, the way that your brother and you have stayed parallel on parallel courses, but also moved apart. You've done so many things together, mm -hmm. TV shows and movies, and over the years you have started to branch, because yeah. you, you, both of you have acting careers now, yeah. which are almost totally different, yeah. right? Yeah, they're wildly different. Yeah, and how did that work out? Well, I think, you know, I started acting in things first, and I had it great for a while. I was yeah. like the male in a 1930s southern marriage where I, I had my wife waiting for me at home and I had affairs yeah. <laughs> like yeah. however I wanted and nobody gave me shit about it, you know. <laughs> and then Jay went off. That's a did, metaphor. Yeah, right? It's a metaphor. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, and then when Jay went to do Transparent, I really found myself kind of threatened by a lot of the connections he was developing with everyone in the transparent set and how much he loved it. And I was so yeah. happy for you. But don't <laughs> leave me, because I love you too. So have fun, but not too much fun. It literally is the, those kinds of feelings we have, and they're, and they're, and they're crazy. And, and the truth of the matter is um, that level of individuation where we can be exactly who we want to be in that moment, not in front of each other. Because I know Jay so well. If he wants to like step it out and be a little different at a party, he can't do that around me because he knows I'm looking at him thinking, right, bullshit, right. that's not <laughs> you. And I can't do that in front of him. And so every now and then, it's like it's good for us to be away from each other in that regard, you know? And, but it's also, you know, it's strange because when I show up to a party by myself, the first question I get is, how's it going? Where's Jay? You know? <laughs> and he gets the same thing. So, you know, of course we want our cake and, and, and eat it too. We love our, our togetherness, but um, but the separateness has been nice. Yeah, well, it must have been a little surprising to see him in an acting role, yeah. which had kind of been your thing. Did you have that moment where you had to be like, oh, he's actually good? Like, it was like, well, there was the first, there's so many moments. There's like the petty moment of like, that's my zone, bro, and don't like get up on my stuff. Because I'm the actor, yeah. and I want the attention. Yeah, you know that's like all this actor. all this id yeah. stuff that you gotta like yeah. get past. You know, um, I didn't really have a problem accepting his an, him as an actor because I figured he would be good at. It. I actually find a lot of directors who have been directing actors for a while would would be and are great when you get them in front of the camera. Yeah. Um, uh, and but I think a lot of the the real challenge for me, you know, again was sort of watching Jay for the first time be truly happy in a creative relationship that had nothing to do with me. Wow, sure, sure. And, and was like, that in Transparent? Were you that was in that? Transparent, yeah. okay. you know? Coup also coupled with the like, I was always the guy when we'd show up at parties together, like people would inevitably, their eyes would kind of turn towards me a little bit. Because they'd seen you in a they'd movie. they'd seen me on like the league right. and they right. wanted to talk right. about the league. Right. And then we go to a party and then everybody wants to talk to Jay about Transparent. And also the levels of conversation they want to have about, with, about Transparent are like, so much more beautiful and interesting than they would have had about the league. So it's kind of like, eh. so I think once we just learn to accept that, like we're kind of petty about this shit sometimes, and like it's okay, and yeah. can we talk yeah. about it? That just helps us to kind of transcend and keep it on the level. And you know, I was thinking about. Uh, I think I mentioned this earlier that I, I believe you and I met on the sidewalk in Austin outside a South by Southwest right. screening of the Puffy Chair, all the way back to. 1914, 1914, I believe, 1914, right before Birth of a Nation I came out. I think that's out. right, yeah. I think that's right, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, you don't have any. The Ku Klux Klan is not involved. <laughs> They're in your not movie. in. No, I yeah, cut them out. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> there. That actually, you could have had a scene in that movie involving the Klan. It seems they do cross the southern. But, uh, yeah. No. Well, no. We're getting into some dark territory yeah. there. But, but, I was thinking about the way that that kind of like, the funky DIY scene of that period. Yeah. I wonder how much that shaped the way you guys ran your career later. Because one of the things that's really striking about about you guys. You've devoted a lot of your careers to nurturing other people's mm -hmm. work. You have produced or otherwise helped out with things that you did not direct that were not your artistic projects, Definitely. right? And that, has that always been an important part of this? No, not at all. <laughs> Honestly, it happened completely serendipitously. Uh -huh. We were the first um, people in our group of friends to start making money. Honestly, right. and so our friends started coming to us and saying, "Like, can I have like five thousand dollars to finish my movie?" And we were like, "Of course," because we had survivor's guilt. <laughs> um, and then we would do what we normally do, which is right. we'd watch their cuts and we'd help them get into Sundance. And, right. and and then someone looked at us and was like, "Oh, you guys are producers now." And we're like, "Really?" And then it started to feel really good and it started to feel really right. And um, not just from an altruistic perspective of. If we can help these people, we should. Right. But selfishly speaking, I'm 41 now. Jay's 45. And if you look at like the Way Brothers, who directed the Wild mm -hmm. Wild Country series for us, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're collectively like 12 years younger than us. Being around them and feeling the energy of who they are and the way they remind us of ourselves at that time. Right. And their level of inspiration and how hard they work. It kind of like juices us back up and keeps us young. And so. As, as we have created space for ourselves and our own duo of collaboration, it has allowed for us to collaborate with people like Sean Baker with Tangerine yeah, yeah. and really expand the scope of the kinds of stories we can tell. So it's not all just stories about male intimacy, which is, right, right. Which is the first five movies we made. You know? That does seem to be true. That, yeah. that, that is a theme that you guys have worked through. I was thinking specifically of Tangerine because I... I don't think it's unfair to say that's not really a movie you guys could have made. I don't right? think so. We're not we're and, not experts at that. It's not and, what we do well. Yeah, and and it was famously shot on the iPhone. You know, yeah. so it was a combination of a really amazing story with amazing characters and a sort of mini technological breakthrough in terms of what you could yes. do. Yes, and to your point, it came from the ethic of the puffy chair, which is Sean right. Baker, who made that movie, had made three wonderful indie films before that, yes. but he couldn't get the money to make it, and so. You know, having made the money we have made off of things like the league, you know, yeah. we just we just Sean came to us and said, "I have this idea," and we just said, "Okay, well, we just cut him a hundred thousand dollar check and let him go." And honestly, we we watched two cuts of the movie and helped and advised on a couple of things and yeah. helped with some sales and a little. But you know, that movie is Sean Baker. Right. Just using our platform, we just protected him and gave him full creative control. And the more I can do of that at this point, we're we're leaning way into that. And that feels oh, really good right th now. That that's awesome. And and um, obviously he went from a strength to strength, having <laughs> moved on to the Florida project after that. Yeah. So which is, you know, he probably uh, I don't. Does he still take your calls? Is that still going to work? And he doesn't know who I am anymore. <laughs> but it's okay. You know, you, you have you read that book, The Giving Tree? <laughs> yeah. it's, it was about me and Sean Baker. Yeah. So that's fine. It's yes. Fine. Yes, I'm, I'm familiar with that problem. <laughs> and I was, yeah. you know, I was thinking to, to somebody who w wasn't exactly in your precise circle. Where one of those South by Southwest festivals, I also had a conversation with Greta Gerwig on the sidewalk. Yes. She seems to have been doing okay lately, so I hear. She's um, doing all right, yeah. yeah. I mean, she, you know, we... Mezzo, mezzo, but yeah. We, we, you know, we throw her some little things every now and then, and she's, yeah. she's, yeah. she's cobbling together a career. Apparently, you know? so, yeah, apparently, right, yeah. yes, yeah, no, that, that, that worked out. Well, Greta Gerwig is the director of Lady Bird, and, um, and a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of uh, wonderful independent performances. We, of course, you guys knew that. And we are talking to uh, Mark Duplass, whose brother Jay Duplass is not here when we've discussed that, and, but they wrote this book together, Like Brothers, which is very. Uh, very funny and and I don't want to say it's it's not dark. That's not the right word. There are some moments of sadness in this book. Yeah, though, right? I think that's fair, and I and I hear you kind of struggling to describe it a little bit. What's and I, the word? And I think yeah. it's fair because I don't have the word. Um, <laughs> there's a melancholy to it because um, I think that when we, if I'm being totally honest, when we started to write this book, I really thought we were going to make a treatise or a manifesto on the truly glorious nature of our collaboration. Yeah. And in the middle of writing this book, HBO canceled togetherness on us. Yeah. And kind of broke our hearts and made us question for the first time, well shit, do we have to stay together the whole step of the way? What would it be like if we got a little bit of space? And we started opening that up. And that's when some of the 
glory of the space started to hit us, but also some of the heartbreak of that, you know? And um, so I think what you feel in this book is this, um, yes, uh, it's, it is a wonderful testament to two brothers who are able to come from nowhere through their unique bond, but at the same time, that time is over now. Um, and we've had to learn how to let that go and become something new that allows individual space. Um, so there, there is some heartbreak in there in the middle of that glorification, yeah. you know? Yeah, and honestly, I think that's one of the things that kind of saves the book from the moments where it feels like it could be too sunshiny mm -hmm. uh, are the fact that when, when necessary, and I, I think this has often been true in, in your creative work, that you guys are sort of, you, you, you like feel the moment when it's necessary to go for something deeper. Mm. Um, or you try to. Like I'm not, that. you know, you might right. not 100 percent get there. I'll Nobody take, does. I'll take but that. That makes that, me feel good. Do you like yeah. that? You like yeah. that? Good. I like that. Yeah. Um, two two really important questions before mm -hmm. before we close. There is a, there is a um, an, a working list in here of your ten favorite movies. That's true. And I'm not going to give too much of it away because we want readers of the book to work out yeah. what what is exasperating or wonderful <laughs> or both right. about your list. Which one of you is apparently the president of the Kenneth Lonergan fan club, though? Jay is 100% okay. the president of that club, but okay. I am a, I'm a willing VP. Okay. I'm right there, but it is Jay's deep love of Margaret. Which, that really which that's a, such a striking movie to be on that list because really a lot of the is. others are like really famous and popular films, I know, and no one saw and, Margaret. Right, right. It's one of the great tragedies. <laughs> it, I mean, it was an attempt to make the great post 9/11 New York yeah. movie, yeah. and nobody saw it. And so, nobody saw it, yeah. and, and and that was at a time when if you made a good movie, everyone saw it. Now, yeah. with everything, you can make great movies and no one sees them and no one cares because <laughs> this is where we're at. Um, but yeah, Jay, Jay is definitely the president there. Um, and then the, the, the intense love of the maybe more obscure documentaries tends to come a little bit more from my side. Right, right. Which maybe is, is, is did that impulse draw you guys towards the project with Wild Wild Country, which a is Absolutely. Amazing. We've been yeah. a, we have been a, uh, f fans of documentaries for years. We've yeah. been scared to make them because we know yeah. that they often take seven to ten years and destroy right. you. Right. And right. if you know if you're successful as a documentarian, it means you only lost a little bit of money. <laughs> um, and and, yeah. and uh, but uh, the good news is that our good friend Josh Braun, who we wrote about in this book, is, is uh, he's kind of the king of documentary sales, and and he. He knew that we were fans of the Way Brothers' first movie, The Batter Basses to Baseball, which if you like Wild Wild Country, watch it. It's on Netflix. Um, and so he brought the project to us. Mm -hmm. um, and it was such a perfect marriage because, you know, when we made our movie, Jeff Who Lives at Home, we hadn't really made that much studio stuff. And Jason right. Reitman was coming off of Juno. And he just swooped down and protected us with his power wow. and gave us full creative control. Yeah. And we will never forget that. And, and we can now, to a certain degree, do that for other Which filmmakers. Incredible. That's And that's so amazing. I'm yeah. not going to take credit for why Wild Wild Country is so good, because it's those boys who made that movie. But we just put our arms around them and said, come move into our office. We will protect you financially, creatively, and give you the scope to do what you do. If you fall on the sword and fail, it's your own fault. And they didn't. So tell us a little bit in closing about for for Mark, for Jay, for the Duplass brothers, what are you guys working on right now? Several years together. Yes, yeah, so we got a couple of things happening. Well, the book comes out tomorrow, which is oh really tomorrow. Exciting. Okay, so um, all the usual sources: Amazon, yep, Barnes and yep, Noble, your local independent books bookstore. Are sold wherever books are sold. And uh, we have a documentary series called Evil Genius that's coming out on Friday, May 11. Uh, really Excellent. excited about it's it's about the famous uh, pizza bombing scenario in Erie in 2003, oh, wow. um, where a guy walked into a bomb uh, with a uh, walked into a bank with a collar bomb around his neck and a yeah. cane gun, um, and he claimed that uh, he had been set up for it. So um, wow. we finally get to tell that story, which is really exciting. Um, we have a four movie deal with Netflix where we make a bunch of original films. Exciting. And I just shot one uh, It's a two-hander with me and Ray Romano, who I've been in love with for wow. years. Wow. Um, that sounds fascinating. And that's another deep dive into male intimacy, <laughs> which is something we know. A new topic for you. <laughs> this is something we know something, yeah. something about. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and we're, uh, we got another season of Room 104 that we're working on getting ready for the fall. Cool. Very exciting. Mark Duplass, the co-author of Like Brothers with his brother Jay, who isn't here right now. Mark, 